Hey, we on. Yo. What's that plan, Hala? Can't take me, baby. I swear your body looking so amazing. Like the fact that you're not complaining. I wanna make some more. Why you gotta be big? So, FHO's HNIC. Mr. MB everywhere. FHO is a lifestyle, lifestyle. a movement, grown folks business. What? So bad, got the bull down my shame. My body all that got me twisted like brain. Love the way you walk, love the way you talk, your jazz it from your head to your toes, your class. Man. You, you thought we was playing. We are live right now. God damn, damn. <laughs> it's Big Cell. What that mouth do besides tell the truth on FHO Podcast Radio. Say, man, what it is. It is Wednesday night, man. I'm on. It's your boy, Big Cell, F-H-O-H, and I see. I got some major celebrities in the building already on the phone dialed in. Sorry for being late. We had a few technical difficulties. The sick, uh, the devil is a lie. So we're going to continue. Uh, we're live on Facebook, on my regular Facebook page, <laughs> and uh, we were live on all streaming platforms. So you can listen to us. matter of fact, let me go on and share this with y'all real quick uh, to let y'all know where we are. But we are here, man. And it is going down. So make sure. Thank you for tuning in if you tuned in and all the rest of that good old stuff, man. But I'm live. I got some special guests. But real quick, let me let me take y'all back to one of these videos. I got see, I still got DVD. I'm one of them old school niggas. I still got DVDs. I'm a, let me play this for y'all real quick, man. Let me let me let y'all hear what how these how these cats been getting down. Me and, and first time in Texas at the Roundup. We had just touched down at the airport. And I'm keeping 100. I gotta use the bathroom. So, but <laughs> me to see this thing right here. I'm gonna get back on the camera and give y'all some insight on what's gonna crack all week here. Real showtime. We touch down. Gonna hook up with AP. Make this shit happen. It's HDTV. I'm in the airport. We got it cracking right now. Ronnie, bang the bathroom, man. Over there. <laughs> the action, that, that, listen, listen. That actually wasn't the bathroom. It was just the unisex bathroom. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't use that one. You know what I'm but it, it, was, it, was, it was the unisex bathroom, man. So, you know, right. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he just tried. He tried to, you know what I'm saying? He tried. He wanted to get his laugh on. Let me take y'all. Right. Let me forward to some of this. Here we go. <laughs> Twenty-two hours. Amazing. When niggas doing it like that, 
then a nigga, I don't give a fuck what your bike look like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nigga, he's a soldier, you yeah, know what I yeah, mean? That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, buying all that iron with bags on it and all that yeah. shit. Nigga ain't got no luggage. That's what's up. Got this shit in the back of an HD. You know what I mean? They come through a photo of HD with the three feet on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That ain't what's happening. That's real. We gonna, 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 we Hey, but then, let me tell you something. On what my uh, national vice president say, I'm going to tell y'all, he right. Nigga, get them miles in. Because I'm going to tell y'all some real shit, and you hear it straight from Boogie, president of second or none. I think I got internal bleeding. That motherfucking son busted my ass up. Man. But I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Me and my cats, we put it down. Second or none, Vegas. Nigga, hey, hey, come well, get some. We're going to get the love special from like the Midwest. Really from the south. I mean, we get some love from the town too, but we get a lot of love because we pound out there. You know what I mean? That's how it is, homie. You you know, you want motherfucker to support you, man. You gotta you gotta put that iron on the ground and go support. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. how it is. It's reciprocated and shit. You know, we look we look at the D.O.s and the Dragons doing for years. You know what I mean? The difference is now we just cross the state lines and go farther and farther with this shit. And that's it what's is, up, man. man. And every motherfucker in any club. He should want his brand to be the most well-respected motorcycle brand of the years, you know what I mean? And he should always feel like, they, you know, we ranking number one or we always pushing to be the best. It ain't that we gonna be beating with each other, but a nigga pushing to be the best, man. A nigga want bragging rights. Because, I mean, you only can have so much bread, you only can put so much money in a bike. Nigga, you only can buy so many trailers, so many trucks, and pull them motherfuckers around. You only can wear so much jewelry and all that old shit. Nigga, where you been on your bike? You know what I mean? Did you stop when you was going through, uh, when you was going, when we was pounded to Atlanta? Did you, did you, did you run through Tennessee, take the back roads, man? You know what I mean? Because we came screaming through that motherfucker. We went to, we went to Atlanta like 25 on the ground. We came back in two pools, you know what I mean? We came across a hurricane, I mean, stormed on us for five straight hours. Couldn't see nothing. We kept it. That's what we wanted to do. You feel me, bro? And that's what's up, homie. And, and them experiences, we sit up and crack jokes and laugh about that now. Man, then we put our boots off and pour out. Yeah, we put our boots off. Them gators, yeah, they yeah. They amphibious too, nigga, because we poured them motherfuckers off <laughs> with that water up in them, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers came alive. Yeah, they motherfuckers <laughs> soaked with water. Hey, you know I gotta tell you too, because I give a big shout out to my homie Big Ant, man. A lot of people that's just that's 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 not only did he buy it, he went and picked it up and he pounded all the way back home. I thought that road, on kid the that road kid was Hey, hey that was going to be a pain right. print yeah, he just on the DVD. He camera so he doesn't get on. <laughs> he <really>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I want to do that nigga hear that shit. You hear that shit, Phil? Listen, the reason why I played that video, man, because I want to show you, they have, they they have been documenting this from day one, I mean, this is volume, what's this, like volume seven or something like that, I'm not even sure, but they got it, man, and uh, we're going to talk to these cats tonight, HDTV, the originators of, uh, of they, they actually, who, what got me doing FHO, so, um, <laughs> it is what it is, but I got them in the guests, introduce yourself, man, let them know y'all here, and let's get this thing cracked. What's up, man, what's up, man, it's Ronnie HDTV, man, the host of my nigga, I got my nigga Ann on the phone right here, too. Yo, what up, what up, everybody, man, in the FHO world, man. You know, we got to give a shout-out to all the FHO fans that be all out there, man. We couldn't wait to get on this bad boy. I'm telling you, man. We done took we done took a shower. I done took a shower. Like, I'm really going somewhere, man. My nigga Ronnie put on his cologne. Now hey. he got a haircut. And I'm going to even see our ass. Hey, I call a nigga the funny part. A nigga got dressed to a cologne, flies a bird, and we nobody would see us. So, you know, a nigga felt special like we were going on bikes and riding stuff. You know what I mean? Well, uh, first of <laughs> yeah, all, I appreciate, I appreciate you guys, Jenna, for real. I appreciate you guys for even giving me the opportunity to interview you. And we're going to get into hey, this stuff, man. Yeah, sir. Hey. Let's go. Go ahead. What you got? Hey, hey, you know, it's funny when you talk, your voice skips. It skips like, what, 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 what? That's how your voice sounds to me right now. Well, that got to be your raggedy-ass cell phone player. Oh, no, no, no. 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 Hey, I done gave Obama for a while. They told me. You know what I mean? I got to rise it, too. So it's skipping. You. Yeah, it may be too loud. It may be too loud. What about that? Is that better? Because it may have been too loud. It may have been clipping. What about that? Is that hey, hold on. Hold on. Hey, Ed, do you hear the yeah. same thing? I hear the same thing. I hear the same thing. Is it about what about yeah, now? What about now? What about now? What about now? What about now? 
Okay, so it might have been said, the, the volume might have been yeah the volume might have been a little too loud. I might have been clipping on you. You know, right now it was skipping like what, 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 like it was doing that. It's like I hear you. Then when sometimes when you talk, it'll skip your voice and shit. Okay, let me let me do a test right now. Is it still skipping right now? Test one two one two one two one two one two. Uh, is it skipping now? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was clear for a minute, and then it just start doing it again. Okay, hold on one second. Let's do this here. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take it off. Hold on. We're going to turn it off. We're going to unpair it. We're going to pair it back. Yes, would you like to pair? Uh, hold on. Done. Okay, so now let's pair it back and see if we get a better signal. Hold on. Would you like to pair? Yes. Uh, uh, tag Rodecaster Pro. Hold on one second. Gentlemen, let me... Test my Wi-Fi connection. Hold on. And my Bluetooth connection, Rodecaster Pro connecting. That's got to be what it is. Is that better? That's better. I, I can hear you now. But Loud it's like when it, even when you are playing the video, it starts skipping at the end. But I knew what it was, though. But I'm like, damn, I hope, I hope you hear that shit, too. You know what I mean? Okay, hold on one second, though, because now I got to hold on one second. Boom. Boom. Let me see if that get better. Roadcaster Pro. All right. Uh, so, hold on. Okay. So, hey, and Pat, but now I'm only on, Pat, I'm only on one side now. So now what I got to do is, hold on one second. You sound better now. I know, but yeah, I'm saying, but, but uh, what I'm saying is that now I don't have you in stereo on my end. So, let me, okay. hang, let me hang we, up. Let me hang up. This. I'm finna hang up and call hey, you back, Ronnie. All right. All right, let me get him back on the phone. Y'all. I want to make sure that everything is on point. It should be stereo right here. Let's see. There we go. Now we in stereo. All right, all right, you all got right, me? So now we should be super duper loud and clear. All right, let me call this. Yeah. I don't think it's no more skipping. Oh, it's back to skipping again. Hello, testing one, two, one, two, testing one, two. Oh, no, that's still. Okay, we good. I think it's good on this end. Yeah, let's see. We live. I think we're going to. You know, no more skipping. Y'all got me. Y'all loud and clear. Any skipping on my end? All right. I, yeah, I'll give you a We good. We good. We good. Move like butter, brother. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we on, man. So let me start this thing off, man. First off, again, I want to congratulate you for all those who have never told you thank you. For all Thanks, the people, bro. for all the people who have been on your videos who didn't even buy the DVD, for all the people, <laughs> for all the people who 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 don't understand what it costs to travel and be there and and to bring the right. equipment and to go home and edit it and time spent for, for all them people, I want to mm-hmm. personally tell you thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for having the documentation. Thank you for. You know, being uh, being a creative mind to even come up with everything that you came up with, and most importantly, thank you for inspiring me to to start the FHO. I moved from LA to Atlanta, and I said, "Man, we gotta we gotta get this thing cracking like they did in the Cali." So thank you right. for that, man. So thank you for that. But yeah, good looking out, my nigga. It feel good to hear that. That's so that's so good to hear, brother. Because man, there's times I, a brother wanted to give up and. And and it's, and it's people like like you, Sal, and and a few other cats out there, man, that'll just say something like that, and it just keep us going, bro. I mean, for real, man. It's like hey, Sal, appreciate that. Hey, on some real shit though, like that video clip when you played from us going to Texas, right? Yeah. That's when that's when I when we first that was my first round up, and that's when me and Ed just got back together because me and him had a little falling out with each other and shit, right? Ooh, so the nigga. So me and him, we been yeah, about a whole year. I was so mad at the nigga. I didn't talk to him for about a whole year, right? So we leaned back up and we hit Texas and we killed them, though, my nigga. I mean, we killed them. So when we got there, you know how the roundup is. Everybody come from everywhere, from everywhere. So when we was there, my nigga, that's when I really found out how big our shit was because we had niggas from the East Coast down South that we never met that really loved us. You know what I'm saying? That really was following us on social media, that bought the videos, from niggas that was bringing them from here back down south and was getting them and watching that shit. You know what I mean? And then I had a night, the, the first night, I'll never forget, when niggas knew we was there, I interviewed 15 bikes plus, my nigga, to the point where I got tired of interviewing niggas with their bikes. I had to tell about 10 other niggas, like, look, I'll do your shit tomorrow. I'm tired. I don't even want to see no more bikes. 
and it was like that shit was over. It was overwhelming, you know what I mean? To the point where it showed me that we had a bigger fan base in California. That this shit was worldwide, you know what I mean? And that shit just like filled a nigga fire, you know what I mean? All right, it so so we we definitely gonna get into it. I'm gonna ask each one of y'all some questions that I wrote, and we gonna we can let the first person answer it, then we go to the second person. So this question is, this question is for uh for you, Aunt. Okay. okay, how does it feel sometimes to to be first off? Okay, let me let me take it. Let me, let me get to this, and I'm asking this question because this is a question a lot of people I hear all the time. How does it feel to be as important as you are and be behind the camera and have Ronnie out front sometimes? Does that ever does that does that ever uh bother you or does it ever affect the brand actually nah because i'm not because me personally i'm not a do i'm not the type of person that like to be in a limelight like my, my my life is a very secretive type of life because um like even on my social media my if, it, if anybody go to my facebook man my facebook is boring as hell like they, if they go to hdtv that shit popping but me i, I just like to stay low-key because i don't like people to know a lot of things about me, you know what I'm saying? I like to be a mystery type of person because all my people that know me, know me. You know, I keep my circle real small and real tight. And, and um, but so, yeah, so being behind the camera, I just like Ronnie to see, I like to see Ronnie turn. I'm like one of, one of Ronnie's biggest fans as well because, like, even when he came to me with it, you know, I was always wanted to be behind the camera. I just want, I just like to make the videos and just make it pop. I just like to put my flavor on it. But he just, he just, he do what he do, and I do what I do, and I love being behind the scenes. But, but, but I do like when he take pictures. I do like to be in the pictures now. At first, I didn't care, but now I like to be in the pictures because you know, pictures is like a found of youth, man. Because we done been in this for ten years, and I know I look different ten years ago than now. So. And it's like I am a part of HDTV, so I do want people to recognize me as well when I'm out and about, just in case Ronnie ain't around, so we can still promote our brand. But other than that, nah, we I'm good with. That. I love being behind the scenes, man. I just like working the magic, man. Okay, Ronnie, uh, this question is for you. What was the birth of HDTV? What made you say, man? You know what? I'm gonna start recording this shit. And I'm a, and I'm gonna start putting it out there for the world to see. What was what was that? What day? What time? What was you doing? You know, what was you okay. wearing? <laughs> what yeah. was you wearing? Right, right. <laughs> I was all um, yeah. No, years ago, I mean, a long time ago, before I even even started HDTV, they had a picnic at Victoria Park in Carson. It was a, it was somebody's annual, and I went with my family, and I took a video camera with me, and I was out there filming. And nobody really knew me like that. And I was filming with the camera and niggas was interacting with my camera. Cause I, I ain't shy to talk to people. So I was hitting people up like, Hey, who y'all is? Where y'all from? And all that. And it was some niggas from Richmond from Bonafide Riders. These niggas burning out on camera and all kind of shit. So I'm filming the whole event. I'm doing detail on bikes and everything. And when I got home, I was chilling with my family watching it. And it clicked in my brain. I said, niggas abide it. i never forget. I told my family, I'm like, niggas abide it. So you know, I, got, I got a lot of females in my family. They're like, Ain't nobody gonna buy that shit and all this old ghetto bullshit, right? Ain't nobody gonna buy that shit, boy. Nobody wanna see that shit. But they were saying that because they, they was into bikes, but not really. But I was really into the shit. So when I seen it, how the people was interacting with the shit, it just clicked to me like niggas will buy this shit. And one thing you let me know was, I know how niggas are. They like to see they self. They like to see they self on camera. Everybody likes to see they self shining. So it clicked in my brain. Niggas will buy this. So when it was, I didn't know how to, bring the DVD out. I didn't know how to produce the shit to the world. So God bless me with the opportunity to meet Anthony because, uh, like I always tell Anthony, it was meant for us to meet because I was up there hustling in the shopping center, selling CDs and movies and shit. That's when that shit was popping, selling like crack. So I'm up there getting money and he was a security guard up there. So the nigga, you know, he, I, I could tell he was down with the lifestyle. He had a street bike at the time. He had him polish shit. You know what I mean? So I just showed the nigga, uh, pictures of Harleys and, and all the whole lifestyle. And one day I seen this nigga showing a video of some shit that was edited. So right in my head, I clicked to me like, this nigga know how to edit. This is the person you need. So I thought about it, like how I'm going to post this nigga and tell him what I want to do. So I just told him straight out, like, hey, I got an idea. I want to go film bikes, kind of like they do the low rider shit, but on the Harley Davidson level, because this shit is taking off. And when that shit started, it was like the bike shit was, just taking off. It was like a lot of niggas was low riding, but the bike shit started getting popular. And I knew, I knew it was going to get bigger than what it was. Cause anything black people do when it's popping, everybody want to get on the bandwagon. So I knew it was going to get bigger than what it was. So I approached the nigga Ed with the idea 
And uh, he was, he came back Monday and he was like, what you want to call it? And I got happy as fuck because that means he was interested. And I was like, HDTV. You know what I mean? Wow. Which means Harley Davidson TV, but I knew we couldn't use Harley Davidson's name. So in the hood, we, you know, nigga, we would be like, oh, that nigga got a clean HD. So that was, that's, what, that's what Harley Davidson means. You know what I mean? We'd be like, the nigga got a clean HD. So I was like, HDTV. And I was like, the name is easy to remember and it's catchy. And after that, shit, we went and filmed. Sent the nigga and federal rest in peace from Red Breed, and it took off from there. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's been on the cracking every since. Thanks to God. You know what I mean? Okay. So for for you, Ant, when he came to you with it, I mean, you are I, apparently, do you, were you in some kind of film school or you come from film school and all editing, or this was just something you was doing as a hobby? Man, I'm going to keep it so 100 with you, Shell. And you probably, I mean, you probably been messing with computers for a while, too. So. I used to have a Sony bio back in the day, back in like 2006. I had, I had just lost my job and I just bought this $2,000 computer at the time. And, um, and I was like, you know what? So they had did a, you, did you buy it or you slid it? Did you buy it or you slid it? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did not know. Hey, man, check this out. Hey, I was trying to build some credit. I know, it was so money. I was keep money. I was trying to build some credit, and I went to Fry's, and Fry's gave us a credit card, man, and 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 they was like, and they, when they gave me the credit card, I bought the Sony Bio. That's when it was just popping, and Dollop. I think what Dollop was still around, maybe Dollop, but I think we just got that 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 you know whatever. But let me skip that part. But anyway, so you know you know you know the, the computers came with Windows Movie Maker. Okay. So I did a slideshow at first. And I'm like, well, if you can edit pictures, imagine if you could do video. So I start doing like little me- messing around with stuff at the house. And that's how I learned how to play with editing. I thought the shit was cool. So at my shopping center, there was a lot of shit going on up there. So, you know, I was doing security up there. So anybody that was, that was fucking up, we was actually uh, putting people in handcuffs. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make some shit like cops. So I made it. I made it, uh, 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 the what is it? I made it, what, Chron- uh, Chronicles of Security and Compton. So I got a lot of shit that I edited with, uh, with, the, <laughs> with, the, two, with the people with the people with the right? Uh, so one day somebody did like a little bomb threat. So I filmed it and Ronnie Keen ain't heard the music. I filmed the helicopter and all that. So I was in Rainbow Kids and he just happened to walk in. So, you know, Ronnie's strolling, doing his thing. So he's strolling and he see that shit and I guess his wheels was turning. So when I went outside, me and him chopped it up, and he's like, man, you, hey, I want to talk to you about something, la, la, la. And he hit me up with it, and I was like, all right, Ron, Ron. You know, and uh, I went home, and I thought about it, because i always been into low riders. Well, not always. My homeboy put me into low riders. I'm, I'm originally from New York, so we don't do that shit out there. But, you know, when my homeboy got me into low riders, I built one, and I started buying low rider books and watching uh, 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 Young Cali and, and Cali Swinging. So, I already had my wheels turning, so I already had the flavor. So I'm like, all right. So when I came back to Ronnie, I was like, hey, man, what you want to name it? You know, because once he said they do burning rubber and they do willies, I was like, you know what? This is something that's catchy and nobody else did it. So this is something I want to try. So the very first HD TV you saw was made on Windows Movie Maker. It was only like one timeline, one, one voice line, and one music line, and that's it. And I just had to cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste, and it came out cool. So that's how I learned. That's how I learned how to do it, though, Sal. Well, you hey, just hey, like hey, me. Hey, I tell everybody. I tell everybody. I'm in college. I'm in YouTube. I go to YouTube University, man. So I can all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff that you see, man. I'm all these computers and this board and all this podcast stuff. I learned from just sitting down, you know, watching the computer, listening, you know, watching videos, doing this, you know, taking people different opinions and putting it all together to make it work. So I totally understand with that. So how long did you and Ronnie know each other before you guys came together? He just happened to, you know, just run your way, Ronnie. He just happened to run his way. Well, I want to say, sell you as a part man for uh, getting taught on YouTube because I do the same thing. But I met Ronnie in 2006. Okay. You know, like I said, he was out there. He was out there selling movies on the shop. And he had a little El Camino, a little cool, little cream Cream color El Camino. Oh, and- dude. <laughs> <laughs> the cream, Annie? Yeah, cream. Okay. Oh, cream, yeah, cream, color. cream color El Camino. He was up there. Yeah. He was a fast, slick talker and shit, right? Yeah, I, I, I liked him. I liked him because he always said, what's up, when I walked past. 
Right. And there was another dude up there that said what's up, but everybody else that was selling videos didn't say what's up, and I didn't care for them. But when Ronnie came to me, he just started chopping up. I said, you know what, huh? I kicked him off a couple times. He left. He respected me. Hey. But he came off, and I come right back, right? <laughs> <laughs> then he came right back. Right. But, but I told him, I said, you know what, homie? I like your hustle. I came. I ain't going to mess with your hustle, but when you see me, just put it away, man. Just show me some respect. He said, all right, homie. So he had this little paper, and he just gave people the paper. And then if he's talking to somebody, he won't pull out the movies. He'll step back, let them look at the paper. i walk past. Then he go back to the people, talk to him, and make his money. I knew what he was doing, but I didn't care. Cause was like, I just said, show me some respect. So he was nice enough to show me some respect. So after that, everybody else in the shop, I start kicking out. You can't come back. You can't come back. So the shopping center was pretty much for him and one other dude, but it was a, a, the other dude was selling CDs. So it wasn't really a big deal. Ronnie had, man, he had the movies. A lot. The movies showed up. So, Ronnie, so, lot so, so, so Ronnie, you've been the, boot man, the bootleg man all this time, man. Yeah, before I used to do other <laughs> street shit, and I had to stop doing a little street game, so that was the next hustle right there. Like, that was back when that shit first started popping. And it was crazy because it was like selling dope, my nigga. I swear to God, like, nigga was coming home with hundreds in his pocket every day just from selling CDs and movies, and that shit was crazy, homie. And it was like, it wasn't legit, but it wasn't like selling no dope, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was like, fuck it, I'm going to take this, you know what I mean? I'm going to do this right here. And the nigga was getting it on, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and nigga loved it. That was cool. So, and, so, 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 and you never really messed with motorcycles or had no love for motorcycles. I really didn't. Just like I didn't have love for lowriders. Okay. My homeboy introduced it to me, and actually, I built the lowrider before my homeboy did. Okay. So it's like when you introduce me to something and I like it, then I run with it, you know. So that's what happened. So when Ronnie told it to me, I was like, it, it, you know, he. He bullshitted for a while. You know, well, I'm going to put it out there. He bullshitted. I'm like, Ronnie, did you get a camera? Because Circuit City was still around. And Circuit City had cameras. So I told him, hey, go to Circuit City, pick out a camera it's or whatever. <laughs> and I said, film it. I said, oh, oh, what what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 if Ronnie was pulling up the slide, I would have told him to get a slide. But, <laughs> like, oh, wow. hey, but I kid you not, Phil. I told him, I said, hey, get this camera. I said, I will edit it, because I did not want to be a part of it. I just said, hey, I'm here. Hey, you know what, Hey, you know what, hey, look, hey, look, neither one of us do certain shit, but I, remember, I didn't want to be in front of the camera. Remember, I didn't want nobody to know like that. Remember, I just yeah. wanted to make the money and, and make the money and chill out. I, I'm going to get to that. Let me get to that, bro. I'm going to get to that. So, look, look, look. So I told, I told him, Sal, get the, I said, get this camera, la, la, la. You know, so he said, yeah, man, I'm saving up my money. I'm getting the camera. Whoop de whoop. Ronnie was making like, hey, I can't tell you. was making about 150 to 300 dollars a day selling movies in that shopping center. I kid you not, sell. Oh, he was just selling them. What? More than more than afternoon shift. <laughs> I don't think. But look, Trump, I'm gonna keep it 100. I don't think he was hungry enough to do the video like I wanted to do it at the time. So I kept approaching him, and he was like, you know, he was like, man, you know, yeah, I'm with it. But me, I just started getting into business. Cause I was doing some other type of business. So my mind was being business minded. Ronnie knew how to make money. He's a, he's a marketer. He's, 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 he got a skill. He got a very good skill. So me being a business minded person, I was like, I'm pushing him, but he not seeing the, 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 um, how can I say it? The necessity in it, the, the drive in it. The well, I mean, but, but you got to understand this too, though. And when you already making money doing something, you get comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard. To, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. To, it's hard to switch up, you know. Oh, so you want me to start saying, well, I'm already doing this. But, you know, it, it, it is a bit difficult from time to time. I he, was, he was killing it. Right. He was killing it. He was killing it. But, so I told him to get this camera. So when he didn't get the camera, I said, you know what, Ronnie? I'm going to do you a favor, man. I got a camera. I'm going to go out there. We're going to film together. So that's when I told him, that's the part I'm getting to where he just he jumped the gun, but it's all good. I told him, I said, you know what, Ronnie, you got to host it. I said, you a good talker. Cause I kid you not, Ronnie went through some stuff on Thanksgiving and he sat with me. He, I was working Thanksgiving day. I let my guards get the time off. I, I baked him a turkey and everything. Ronnie came up to the shop and him to make his money and he sat and talked to me and that's the first time me and him really had a deep conversation where a lot of emotions came out. And I got the cry to the thing and everything. I said emotions. But, but I'm glad he kept 
So right. at the end of the day, he bent, he bent it to me, and I said, you know what, homie? You a G. You know, you, you know, you game bang. You a gangster. I, I did my game bang, and I'm a gangster. But there ain't nothing wrong with crying, my nigga. You, you got feelings, too. You fucking human. So, you know, we chopped it up. We talked. And that's how me and him got real close. After right, that day, right. Thanksgiving day, Thanksgiving, I want to say Thanksgiving 2006, we got close. I can remember because I got fired in 2006 in March. <laughs> I was place. I was working in Compton. Oh, that's how I know it was 2006. And that's when me and Ronnie got close. And so we've been, we've been tight like butt teeth ever since, man. Everything, wow. huh? Wow. Rocking it every so, mm-hmm. so at this yeah. point, at this point, you guys come together and say, "Okay, we're gonna do this." You do the first video. Um, how many? Okay, so how do you know how to go print? You know, get multiple DVDs, make a cover. Did the first one have a cover? Did it have? You know, what? You know, how did you put all that together? <laughs> oh, oh, you said that the first one have a cover. The first yeah. one, every video had a cover because they had to have a cover. It's just like yeah. a real movie. They got to have a cover on it. So our first volume actually had a cover of Charlie Brown doing a willy at his house. Blurry as fuck. Blurry as fuck. Yeah, it came out blurry. It came out blurry. It came out a little fucked up. So we like, nah, we, that shit is too easy. We ain't going to run with that. So we end up getting a good picture of that nigga and rest in peace from Rare Breeze Bike. And we posted that on the front. And the reason why we did that, because on volume one, we did his funeral. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And he rest in peace. So, so it was only right that we put his bike on the front. Plus, that nigga had a fly-ass bike. So it was only right. And then I had Charlie Brown on volume one speak on it. You know what I'm saying? And he spoke on him because that was his boy. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, we showed footage from the funeral and just clips of it. Rest in peace, living his life. You know what I mean? That nigga was a fly nigga having money. So it was cool. You know what I mean? Everybody loved it. And it went right. So after that, every volume had to have a cover because it, it, it's only right that it has a cover. You know what I mean? Because everything you buy has a cover. When you buy a rap CD, it got a cover. When you buy a movie, it has a cover. So it has to have a cover. But with the cover game, it started being a good one because niggas start competing for the cover. Niggas start paying us money to be on the cover because our shit was hot. And like I said, everybody want to be seen. Everybody want to be the big dog. So we had niggas competing, paying us hundreds just to be on the front. You know, which I don't blame them, though, because it's like, who don't want to be on the front of something? It's like being on the front of a magazine. You know what I mean? Nigga wants that front shot. Everybody going to see it before they open it and watch it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the cover game was dope. And it was crazy because each cover, we got more creative with it. Or we'll try different shit. Or even like that Texas uh, video, the little, the little clip you show from Texas. We tried like a cartoonish looking shit, like the from San Andreas kind of look, oh, like that from the video game. Yeah. But so, yeah, it's creativity behind it. You know what I'm saying? It's good. But still, but still let me tell you my version real quick. I'm gonna tell you what, what, what. Look, check this out. So as I as I edit the video, the, the editing program had like a shade, like a snapshot. So what I did was with Charlie Brown when we filmed Charlie Brown doing a Willy, I took a picture of that. But I didn't make the screen big enough, so when I took a picture of it, it was so small, and then I blew it up. That shit was blurry as fuck because truck, truck. I didn't even know how to do like Photoshop type shit, and I'm still don't use Photoshop. I use another program, but it was so crazy because I had my homegirl create a, a video cover, and man, what she did was she had some biker going through a wood. I'm like this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck? What happened? I rather use the blurry shit. I rather use that blurry ass Charlie Brown doing a willy than right. that old somebody riding in the distance going through some fucking woods. That shit was some bullshit. Yeah. Right. So anyway, we did print out that we printed out five hundred copies, but I had to revamp it because I asked somebody. I think I asked Sea Rider, and before Sea Rider even got a part of that. He was doing bootleg movies too, but he was nothing. He was never part of the bike scene at that time. Okay. So I used to just deal with him on buying movies from him and shit. So I actually run. I'm like, hey man, how you do covers and stuff? I'm like, mine's look blurry. He said, well, don't you get a picture of a bike and just use the bike and then work around it? And I said, you know what? That's a smart idea. So when I found the picture and bike, that's when I started doing stuff around it, and it came out clear and it came out good. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that's how the covers start coming out. And, and, and ever since then, I start getting a little bit creative. But I'm still not a picture person. Like, I do not, I'm not good with pictures, but I try my best to do what I can and I make it work. 
Sometimes Ronnie don't like the covers, but sometimes I'm like, you know, Ronnie, we're going to run with it. But, you know, he'll be like, you know what, Ant, cool. But sometimes he make me like, hey, he, he tell me, Ant, go back, man, do that shit over, because that shit ain't going to fail. Oh, hey, Ronnie, hey, hey, man. It's like, the, it's like the trailer in volume one, though. This nigga, like, this nigga, he, look, I told him we got to come with a trailer for volume one to advertise that shit to show niggas how we getting down, right? So this nigga put together some video clip, and he called me into the office like, hey, check this out. And that shit was coarse as fuck, my nigga. I said, I said this is some bullshit, right? I, said, I don't like it. I always keep it real. He'll tell you, I'm going to keep it real. If I like it, I'm going to If I don't, I don't. I told the nigga straight out. I said, nigga, that shit corny, nigga. That, look at them bikes you showing. That's some bullshit. And I get what he was trying to do. He was just trying to show the biker lifestyle. But I'm like, you got to show fly shit. You got to show shit that niggas going to gravitate to. Because everybody likes something that looks good. So I said, nigga, show Met, niggas doing wheelies, burnouts, fly bikes, fly bitches, everything. So he went back in the lab and he came back with some dope ass shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was so funny when I saw that first clip. I'm like, hell no. Nah. But I couldn't because <laughs> he was new to the game. You know what I mean? But my nigga came back and got it right. You know what I mean? And I feel like, honestly, my nigga look like one of the dopest editors ever I to have. But I thank God well, what for you, the What nigga, you guys don't nigga, even understand no. is that what you guys don't even understand is that you guys at that time had become um executive producer, producer and director and all of that. You know, you had became right. you had a whole a whole different, you know, production team that you guys had created yourself to be and didn't even know really the the level of what it was. I got a question for Man. you. I got a question for you, Aunt. Um Okay. Do you think the set has appreciated you documenting everything, all the documentation? Do you think the set has appreciated it? Yes, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you when I felt the uh, appreciation, and it was during volume two. Volume one was cool, but I'm gonna tell you when I felt it. Ronnie didn't come out with me this one night, and I went out there with one of my homeboys, and I went to Rare Breed, and that's when we released. But no, oh, actually, you know what? Me and Ronnie already had released volume two, and we made some sales somewhere. I don't know where it was at, but we went somewhere and we made some sales. But then one particular night, I went to Rare Breed and Ronnie wasn't around. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to go up there and see what happens. And then Bolo, Bolo from, 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 Soul um, Brothers, Soul Soul Brothers, Brothers from Alpha, yep. this man, you know, you know, he, you know, he got, he, he, he's aggressive. He pulled up, I think he pulled up in a Range Rover, jumped out the car. He said, Man, fuck that, man. Who got that volume two? Nigga, I heard that shit was the shit, man. I want that shit right now. I said, you know, and it was a double DVD. I said, man, hey, I got it right here. I got, I need twenty dollars. Nigga, money ain't no shit. Ain't no problem, nigga. Here you go. Me twenty dollars, and I saw, and I gave it to him right, right. In there. That's when I knew they appreciated because he actually was on volume two, but he wasn't even tripping off his part. He just heard that the volume two was hot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's what it was. And right then and there. Sell, I realized because you know Bolo was a heavy hitter, yeah. well known. Yeah, yeah, he's for respected. Sure. My man, and for him, for him to pull up at Rare Breed, I don't know where the fuck he was at. I don't know what the, what he was doing, but he just pulled up out of nowhere in the middle of the street, jumped out of his truck, and like, for it. You the nigga with HD with a fucking funny that body right now, right, right. Man, I'm just and it, and that's it. right then and there. I was like, we on to something. We we good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what. That's what made me feel good about that sale. And I, after that, man, I was, I, we was just on. We was just on. Yeah. So w when it comes it to, because this is what a lot of people, for me, a lot of people don't understand. When it comes to trying to produce, you know, the mm -hmm. whole concept, the video, putting together the package, buying this equipment, buying that equipment, because I done bought... I done bought the wrong equipment and had to go back and buy a different equipment. I bought the wrong cable and got to go back and buy this other cable. Just trying to learn how to do all of this stuff. When the money, yeah. when the money and the time, especially the time editing, when all of that is said and done, and you sit back and you say, "Okay, here it is, Ronnie. This is it. This is the DVD. This is the package." Have you ever said, "Uh, this one might not be as we probably need to"? Have you ever went back to the drawing board? Um, as far as with the whole DVD or the, the yeah, concept with, of the, with, the, with the whole DVD? No, you know what? once it's done, it's done because through the whole process of nigga thinking, like, what's going to look good? How are we going to put this music to this footage and everything? So once it's done, it's done. Sometimes maybe Ed could say on his editing tip, he probably took something out and put some in. But like the, through the whole process, it's a, it's a thought pattern. It's like making a song. It's like making a song. When a rapper in the booth, 
they rapping, they be like, no, nah, go back, take it from the top, and rerun the beat and all that. It's like that. It's like making them deep, it's like making a song, my nigga. You know yeah. what I mean? It all yeah. got to play out to the end. So it just come out beautiful music. You know what I mean? So the DVDs, like, every every single one came out dope. Every single one. I, I love them all, to be honest. It, it, it's some that's better than others, but they all dope because they all show you different shit. They all take you different places. You got different people on them. It, it's just good. It's good, homie. It's real. And as an editor, as an editor, as an editor, and have you ever been working on something and then fucked it up and lost everything? Yes, I'm gonna tell you right <laughs> now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Listen to this. Chris, Chris owned this right. Listen, Chris owned this hotel. 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 And I'm going to tell him he need to go back and cheat it. Right. I got to give C-Rod his props because C-Rod taught me so much. He, he taught me how to shortcut because I was doing stuff the long way. He was like, Anthony, every time you put a clip and you like it, save it. Because mm. I did about two hours worth of work, which was only like 15 minutes if you watch it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was two hours worth of work, and I didn't save it, and my computer froze and shut down. I lost all that. Oh, Sal, I was so hot that I wanted to give up. I kid you not. I was like, I'm done with this shit. Yeah. But i tell you this. Um, um, damn, I almost lost my train of thought. The trip. So he taught me how to do that. So I, 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 I lost a lot of footage. Uh, not footage, but I lost a lot of what I wanted to do. And I had to do it all over again. But it still came out good. But there, there's times where I overthink. And I'll be like, man, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. But then Ronnie like, man, go with it. They're going to love it. And I'm like, all right, cool. And they wound up loving it. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, when I do my editing, I lay the, I lay the, I lay the music down first. And then I try to find some footage to go with the, the music. So that's why when you hear the beats, I listen to the beat and I try to put the, I try to put the footage to the beat or what they say and try to go with it. And it, that's what, that's what gravitates the people. Because us, us as black people, we have rhythm. That's what we do. We like hearing music. You know, whether it's ratchet music or not, we love it. So it's music now that I don't even care for. I put it on and you know, but I will say this, Sam. I'm going to tell you, like, you know, Volume 5 was one of the best. I kid you not. Dynamite, Dynamite, retired Red Breed, came to my house and was like, hey, man, you know, you, you feel me? I got to make sure it's right. Now, Dynamite could be very anal, but I love that nigga. You know, he can give me a headache. But I love him. <laughs> this dude was like, I don't like that. I said, it's one part of Volume 5 where the song going so smooth and it's two white boys on there. He like, take them motherfuckers out and put some niggas. Because that's the only thing that make that shit look worse. I said, you know what, Dom? I can't go back and do that, nigga. That's too much work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, that's before, that's before she rider taught me some shit. So the white boys was in there. And it was cool, but he didn't care for it. But other than that, he told me, you know, go with some old school music. Niggas, niggas like old school music. So when he helped me with that one, that's why Volume 5 became so successful because Dynamite had a, a big part of that. But I'm not going to lie. Ronnie, Ronnie keep it 100. If he tell me it's some bullshit, it's some bullshit. And I go back and I do it again, even though I hate it. So I'll be like, fuck what Ronnie talking about. You know what I'm saying? But Ronnie, Ronnie I got to respect what he say because this is his idea at the end of the day. So I got to respect his vision and what it is. I got my own vision, and I'm going to run with it as well. But his, his his vision is noted and it's respected. So some things I will change, but if there's something that's out of my hands and it's going to take too much time, I'm like, Ronnie, we're going to have to run with this. And he will like, yeah, whatever. But I, you know, I respect the shit, but say one thing about me. I know, like, when you represent something and your name behind it, it got to be right, my nigga. Yeah. Like, you, you, whatever you put out, it got to be right, homie. Like, no matter what, because I totally right. Like, right now, me and him, we got a lot of projects and, and future ventures that we trying to do. But I told him, you know what? We need to slow down and do one thing at a time. And really? whatever we do it as one thing at a time, we got to put our best in it, no matter if it's big or small. No matter what it is, because I think everything we do is a stepping stone. So I want everything a person see or hear about us to be good, because it takes you to the next level. You know what I mean? So it's like, and like I said, I never just go with the flow. Like 
yeah, it's cool and it's not cool. I can't be fake like that. If the shit whack, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? That's just like, even, I have times when we, when niggas are asked us to film they bike, and I think the bike whack is a motherfucker. And I'm like, all right, fuck it, we're going to film it anyway, just to let the nigga get a shine up. You know what I mean? But now, I don't play that shit. I be out there on the bike set and I be looking at these niggas' bikes like, man, this shit plain as a motherfucker. Oh, this motherfucker stock. I ain't filming shit. You know what I mean? Like, we get out like that now because it's like the game changed so much that niggas try to throw anything in there and think it's acceptable. But I'm going to stick to my standards like, nah, nigga, if you stay fly, we ain't fucking with it. You know what I mean? And that's on any level, dog. You got to keep it real. This shit got so watered down. That it's like niggas accept anything, but I, I'm not going with that. I ain't gonna conform to that because it, it makes you water down too because you accepted the bullshit. You know what I mean? Question for you, Ronnie, is you said that your first you had a camera, you was at your family reunion and you the bikes was up there, you got that. It, it wasn't a family it, it wasn't a family reunion. It was it was a bike event at Victoria Park. So you went to the bike event with your family? It was, so it was a it was a bike yeah, event. Yeah, okay. yeah. I took Okay. Yeah, I took my family to a great, so, yeah. So how was your introduction? Once you got volume one done and now you, it's time to go put it out there and sell it, how was, how did the set, how was your introduction to the set? That's part one. Part two of that is did they embrace you? And then the, the, at the, the final part of this question would be who was your first sale? Okay. This what it was. Okay. I would say the first, okay. When we, when we first came out, we had a release party in the Compton Shopping Center, the same shopping center where I was selling DVDs at and all that, which is on Compton and Alameda, right? We okay. we we had a release party behind Sam's Barbershop. That was a black barbershop over there, right? So we had a release party. We had a canopy. We had the, the projector screen out there showing the DVD and everything, right? So we invited people, and, and we chilling when nobody there. So let's see, you know, a whole pack of bikes came up Alameda. It was Charlie Brown. It was Bernard, a whole bunch of niggas. Some of the niggas we didn't even know, but they showed up. And that shit felt good because it was like, okay, they came to support this shit. So my son, little Ronnie, this little nigga was running around. He was a kid at the time, running around with some little Mexican kid and shit. I didn't even know the little Mexican kid. He running around with him. And my son actually sold the first DVD to somebody. And he was a kid. Wow. So that was our first sale ever. I didn't even sell the first one. My my son sold the first one, you know what I mean? Yeah. So he sold the first DVD after that. We got the moving units to the niggas that pulled up on the bikes and shit. So after that, that showed me, like, okay, this shit gonna go. You know what I mean? And it was, uh, I think, was that a Wednesday? Eh? No, it was a Friday night. Oh, it was Friday night. But somebody had an event that night, remember? Somebody Red, had an event Red that Green. night. Rare Breed I, had an event. Who? Rare Breed. Right. So look. So us having that little coming out party versus Rare Breed having an event and niggas still showed up to our shit, that meant a lot to me. You know what I mean? Because they could have skipped over us and went straight to Rare Breed, but the niggas came, pulled up, and showed up and showed out. So that shit inspired me like, okay, this shit going to work right here. You know what I mean? So we pressed on from that. And uh, shit, it was good. And what else you asked me? What else you asked me? No, the other part was, so you said, so, so the, the introduction, you, you got that. They came, you did uh, the release. They came and showed you right. some love for that. Um, so, right. they, so they embraced the whole thing from the beginning. So you never had any resistance. We're like, man, get on up out of here. Ain't nobody buying that shit. Blah, 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 blah. It was all, all, no, all love from what? the beginning. Right. No, you know what it was? I felt resentment because I had a homie named Diamond, rest in peace, man. He, he was from the neighborhood, but he was from divided time. So when me and Ann would go to the bike set, some niggas was iffy, like, uh, we don't want you to film us or certain little bullshit or we have problems getting to certain clubs and shit like that because the bike set was more locked down and more solid back then. Yeah. You know, sometimes some clubs we went to, you had to know somebody or be patched up to go in that motherfucker. So D so Diamond, that nigga was from Divided Time. So, you know, they club brothers with the DOs with which got a lot of pull on the bike set and certain other cats. So anyway, he would he would be like, nigga, this my little homie, he from the hood. Let him do what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? This nigga ain't no undercover cop. He ain't no bullshit nigga. He ain't coming from wherever. This nigga's real. So let him do what he's doing. So I salute Diamond. He rest in peace right now. I love him. Rest in peace. But that nigga opened a lot of doors to niggas because niggas that he knew that we didn't know, he would tell them, hey, this is my little homie. That's his homie, Ed. Let them get out. They trying to film some videos. Let them do their thing. And niggas will open the, open the door for us. So he was very instrumental in a lot of shit of us getting in the doors. But once we did start fucking with niggas, and niggas would talk with us, and we'd talk with them, and, and, and niggas know real from the fact. So we'd chop it up with niggas, and niggas would love who we are and, and what we're trying to do. We're trying to show the lifestyle to the whole world. 
So why why would they shut that down? So I never really felt like we was we was pushed away or, 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 or turned away from nothing. We we was showing love from the start, and that's what kept us pushing. We had times when niggas would be like, "Who is y'all?" or, or "What y'all doing?" And we'd tell them, we'd tell them. And once we tell them, they couldn't say no. So back to what I said at first, niggas love seeing they self. So why not let our clubhouse be on the video? Or why not show my dope ass bike to the world? So niggas wasn't gonna turn it away. They just had to know what they was fucking with. You know what I mean? Just like I got a story like this. Look, the nigga Handlebar Lee. I remember before I knew who he was, I saw the nigga on Discovery Channel on, on, on American High Rise, right? So I used to watch that shit a lot. And I seen that nigga on there. I'm like, damn, he the only black dude on there fucking with the white people. And I'm pretty sure the white dude that owned that shop, that nigga was a baller-ass white boy. So he on TV. So I always wanted to put HDTV on real TV. So when I met Handlebar Lee, he was at Red Breed Bike Night, and I approached the nigga like, hey, man, I'm making a video, and it's called HDTV. Would you love to go on there, right? So I had an idea of putting the nigga on the show, and if he see the DVD and it's dope, he'll show the white people and we'll blow up from there, right? That's my idea, right? I'm thinking of trying to just really blow out the water with his money. So the nigga, I approached him, and I had, the nigga had the ball, he told me, nah, I ain't got no time for that, man. You know, I'm real busy and all that shit. So I went and told Ed what he said, and Ed like, man, fuck that nigga, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, I'm going to say that, yeah, because I was about to say, you know what I'm saying, that nigga, yeah. That's how I felt. Right, straight up. So so after that, I thought I said, fuck the nigga too. Like, you know, fuck him then. We don't need him. We don't keep, we don't keep bashing on. So by the end, they, you know, the Arizona run come up every year. So we out in Arizona. We on like volume four. I'm walking through the park with the bag of video, slaying them, doing my thing. This nigga, Handlebar Lee, chased me through the park, homie. The nigga saw me. The nigga said, hey, hey, come here, man. Come here. I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you, right? So now, he got time now, you know what I mean? The nigga chased me down. Hey, man, I need to talk to you, man. Uh, uh, how can I be on your video? You know, uh, can we work the deal out and all this old shit, you know what I mean? So I understood him, though. You know, he, we was new to him, so he probably felt like we probably was Mickey Mouse or something, some bullshit shit. I don't know. But, nigga, once we proved ourselves to the game, he couldn't help but to to conform to what the fuck we was doing. The nigga chased me down. He wanted to be down with us. So we ended up working a deal out with him to the point where we advertised his his card on the back of our DVD, on the back of the box, you know what I'm saying, with his name and number. And, you know, basically his business card on the back of our DVD, you know what I mean? So it's like, it is what it is. So me, anytime a person turn a nigga down, I don't give a fuck. I keep smashing on because when you keeping it real and you putting out a good product, niggas can't help but to follow suit, my nigga. They can't help it. You know what I mean? So he came chasing me down. You know what I mean? So it's all good. I, I went to him first, but shit, he had to come to me second. And the nigga had to pay, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, still. Oh, yeah, still. We had to pay because, nigga, I didn't, I didn't appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we understand, man. When, when something brand new, he feeling himself. At that time, Handlebar Lee was a man, so he was feeling himself. Yeah. And my right. question, my question right. to you is: Is at what point did you really feel good about the whole thing? Like, did it, was it a certain, uh, you know, like Ronnie mentioned earlier, when you guys hit Texas and people in Texas was like, "Oh shit, HDTV." At what point f for you was it when you knew, okay, no, this shit is, we done did our thing. You know, all glory be to God type of thing. At what point? I'm going to tell you right now, we, when we first started advertising, I was working at my shop and center doing security, and I started using MySpace. So MySpace, that's when I found Pierre, uh, Pierre from Vegas, mm -hmm. and some other people, you know what I'm saying? But what really got me when Marty from Australia called me when he seen volume one on YouTube. That's before they had copyright shit, yeah. and I could use any kind of music I want. You know what I'm saying? That's when it was popping. Uh -huh. right? He saw he he hit me up out the blue like, "Hey, I like this motorcycle stuff." And I'm like, "Who the fuck is this?" You know what I'm saying? I can do that to him, dude. That's when I knew. That's when I knew we was on to something. So it was Marty, Marty that got at me. Then it was uh, my boy Luther. He used to be from Next Level. My boy Luther from Chicago. He used to call me on a on a constant basis and tell me how it was on the Midwest. Then it was a guy, I forgot his name, but he lived in Florida. He told me about how the outlaw shit was and how it was out there in Florida. So a lot of people in LA didn't know nothing about how I went over there. I knew everything, Sal. Mm. But 
That's before anybody else knew anything. Cause this was back in like oh six, oh seven. Yeah. You know, like they giving me game. Like I want club, you don't want to fuck with la 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 because these, you know, they do. You know, it was so much shit. But um, that's when I knew we was on to something. And um, is it, what was the question you asked me again? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. that was, <laughs> no, but that, that was it. When did you first know? When did you really say, okay, hey, you know what, we didn't, we didn't did this. Yeah, this, that, this, that's this what it was. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what it was. When they start calling me and I start having conversations with them, I swear, I, I mean, no disrespect to my boy in Florida, but I forgot what his name was. He used to call me on a constant basis and tell me, like, how it was in Florida. And I always wanted to visit him, but I forgot what his name was. But my boy Luther actually got us to Chicago, and that's how I started messing with Juice from Next Level and all that through my boy Luther. But, um, it, it, you know, but that's when I knew we was on to something, and... You know, we actually converted people from the in the Midwest to get off their high boosters and actually get on Harley. Oh, my yeah. mama, nigga, hey, we we made niggas go buy Harley because I heard it right out their mouth. Like when I was in Texas, I I got a documented niggas on tape. Like, yeah, I'm I, like, it's, it's on that video, it's on that DVD. He just, right, uh, yeah, he right. just watching HD TV, watching HD TV, and I remember when I told Ed, I'm like, nigga, that shit powerful, homie. And we making niggas go spend thousands of dollars just to get out with this lifestyle. We doing it, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, this is this is cool shit right here. You know what I mean? I'm like, man. But that's like the other night. I was talking to Ed about how I was watching Volume 4, and when none of us fucking would, you know, bikes and shit like that. But as time went on, I made him a few. Um, one of our other partners made smooth for one kid. All them niggas, I opened up the door to them to this Hardy Davidson world. Cause yeah. I told him like nigga ain't nothing like it. I'm like this shit flies a motherfucker. Like this the next level of low riding. Cause a lot of niggas that was low riding start start getting bites. You know what I mean? And then just like like this is punchy. Punchy very instrumental in the game. I always call a nigga a trendsetter. Cause when I first saw Punchy, he was on Kelly Twain talking shit, hopping cars and all that. Then when I saw that nigga get a bite, I said I guarantee you everybody else gonna start getting a bite too. Cause this nigga got one and he making that shit look good, homie. And what happened? It took off like a wildfire, nigga. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody doing it. You know what I mean? And, and it, it is what it is. The game is good. It, it's good. But it's like, with the game, it's crazy, though. Because the game, back then, in the back in them days, it was a different game than it is now. You know what I'm saying? Like, the players changed. Back then, that shit used to look so fly to me. Like, nigga, this a rich man game. This shit dope. Now, you got bums that got bites. You got bullshit niggas <laughs> that got bites. You got all anybody that have a bite down. It, yeah. It, it was set because it's like, remember how we was talking about it was private? You know, even 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 I saw, when I, remember I told you I'll be watching your show now. Yeah. So when I watched the show the other night, when old boy called in and told you that the bike set was more private back then to the point where they didn't let anybody in. So now it's not private. Everybody be there. Every motherfucker don't even like bikes still come to the bike set to hang out. But to me, it's a good and a bad because when you got motherfuckers there that don't even got nothing to do with it, they bring their drama to the bike set. They bring their negative energy to the bike set. Or they bored. They call their little raggedy homies to the bike set. Now you got a, a gumbo pot full of, you got real niggas there. You got fake niggas there. You got real bitches there. You got fake bitches there. You got trouble starters. You got everything all in this one, one, one area. You know what I'm saying? When at first, you only had motherfuckers that was real about the bike bike life in one area. So it, it cut down the drama. But as time went on, they let anybody come in. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I done been at, I mean, when I first got out the pen, my nigga, we was chilling at a club and I seen a whole pack of young niggas with blonde hair, backpack, skinny jeans on, coming to the club. And I'm like, who the fuck is these niggas? Like, they don't even look like they like bikes, but these niggas here hanging out. I'm like, hell no, nah, y'all let anybody get in with this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it fucked up the game. It fucked up the game, though. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep it real. You got to real. When there's nothing but real niggas around, nothing but real shit happens. But when you have a whole mixture of shit, that's when the confusion come in. That's when the gossip come in. That's when the bullshit come in. And it fucked up everything. You know what I mean? Even, even I look at how some white club, white motorcycle clubs only got white people in it. Not one nigga in sight. But black people accept anything. Anybody, oh, your bike clean, come on, hang with us. Yeah. Fuck all that. Niggas got to have some standards behind this shit and shut shit down. Because I'm like, y'all niggas let anybody come in and join y'all shit. One of these motherfuckers going to be an undercover cop trying to look for how y'all niggas getting this money and how y'all getting these bikes. And that's y'all you know. know. You know what I mean? They, they, they've been there for a while. 
Well, we're going we're gonna to pay right. some bills real quick, man, and we're going to come right on back. I got to pay these bills. We'll be right back, y'all. Select luxury cars. Proud sponsor of the FHO Podcast Live Show. The most diverse luxury vehicle selection in the greater Atlanta area. The highest quality customer service.